Hey guys, we're back. This time we're taking a look at another Wave 4 expansion for the World of Tanks miniatures game. This time around we have the Soviet IS-2, which is uh, among my favorite tanks. It's up there. I think the I is it the IS-3 is the one I'm in currently, but uh, I love the whole IS line to be honest. Anyway, we're going to get right in and take a look. As with all the other expansions, inside here is some instructions on how to redeem your codes. On the back here, this little piece that I'm ripping off, there are codes that can be redeemed in the online game to give you free stuff. If you make a new account, you get them better stuff, but if you have an existing account, it does have some stuff on there for you as well. So check that out. On to our vehicle card here, we have the IS-2. It has the big gun special rule as well as the fortress special rule. It is a tier 7 heavy tank for 73 points. Has a massive firepower of 6, survivability of 2, mobility of 2, initiative of 3, huge 7 hit points. And we have a commander, radio operator, gunner, driver, and loader. So 4 guys there with the commander doubling up. On the flip side, we have our history of the tank down here in the corner. Above that, we have our heavy tank rule, which allows you to roll a blank die, or re-roll a blank die when defending. And over here, we have our big gun rule. When attacking, you can modify one of your hits into a crit. Very nice. And the uh, fortress rule, when this tank is the target of a side shot, do not subtract defense dice. So if you're being attacked from normal flanking from the side shots, you lose a die. In this case, you do not. You still lose it from the rear though, so if you're fighting against one, remember that. you got to be in the rear to get the flank bonus and remove a uh, defense die. For our equipment cards, we have the Spall Liner for 5 points. When defending, this tank can modify a success into a crit. It allows you to take one of your successful blocks, turn it into a crit, and then you can choose whether to block a normal hit or a crit with it. Very nice. Little expensive points wise, but can pay off in the end, especially on a tank with such high hull value. Next up, we have a heavy APCR shell, which is armor piercing for two points. You can use this on a tank with a base attack value of five or greater. It's discarded when used, gives you plus one attack when attacking a tank at close range. Pretty interesting card there. Two points isn't too bad for that. Having a 6 base attack, plus that's a 7 attack value, plus you're losing, they're losing a defense die at close range, can really make a hard hit. And you combine that with the heavy gun ability, uh, big gun ability that the IS-2 has here. And uh, you can see where that really, uh, really hurts. Little disappointed in the fact that the IS-2 has a 6 value where the Tiger with its 88 only had a 5. And this gets the big gun ability that didn't. A little missed opportunity there, but I guess the 122 millimeter is a, a huge gun. So, interesting on that though. Next up we have a consumable upgrade for Soviet only for 1 point. It is extra combat rations. Discard on use. It allows you to repair a radio damaged or bailed out critical card. So we've seen these before. That's a pretty common one, just to help uh, remove a couple crew card or critical cards for one point. Not a big one or not a major issue, but uh, if you think that you're going to suffer from those, it might be worth picking up on a tank with that many hull. The chances that eventually you're going to take a couple criticals, and one of them might be one of those. Definitely makes it worth considering. Next up we have Six Sense, which is a basic commander card for six points. At the start of the shooting phase, roll a die on a hit or crit. This tank can make a single move, does not get an increase in its movement token. That's pretty awesome. Allows you to possibly move out of the way of somebody else's shot out of their arc or out of their uh, line of sight. It also allows you to move yourself into a better position, maybe into cover or to where you can get a flanking shot, something like that. Definitely an interesting one. I really like that one, and uh, despite its high cost, I think it's well worth it. And finally, we have Mikhail Travkin. It's a unique loader, Soviet only for two points. 
And he gives us Adrenaline Rush, which is plus one attack while in the red. On your hit point bar here, you go from green to yellow down to red. When you're in the red, you get this bonus. It's kind of tough on this one because our red's only one, so you're basically critical one more hit and you're dead. Um, so I'm not sure if that's all that worth it on this tank, maybe on something else. And then we also get Firefighting which allows you to re-roll a failed repair roll when attempting to repair an engine fire critical. Again, something with a long um, hit point bar, you got that much extra chances of getting a critical, having things like him or the um, extra combat rations that allow you to compensate for criticals are nice. I'm not sure he's entirely worth it for this specific tank, though. He has only two points, though, which isn't bad. This is already, I think, the most expensive vehicle we've seen for the game, though. For our model, got our IS-2 here. A lot of detail in these, which is nice. Again, side tanks, which are pretty standard on the KB and the IS uh, models. That's where you want to shoot them in the video game, blow those tanks up. Put the uh, reverse mounted machine gun on there. Massive gun. Again, they didn't drill holes in the gun barrels, which is kind of annoying, but something you can do yourself if you really want. That's a look at everything that comes in the IS-2 expansion. I have to say, I'm pretty impressed with the tank itself. For the points, though, it better be amazing. Uh, I'm still a little shocked that it has a more powerful gun than the 88, which... I guess considering an 88mm versus 122mm you would expect, but the 88 was the high velocity and had a bunch of other things going for it. It was a beast of a gun, and I think they underrepresented that in the game. That said, as far as the Soviet tanks go, this thing is a beast, and it ranks right up there with their tank destroyer, if not better than the tank destroyer. But it comes at a cost of points. You're paying a massive amount of points for this thing, and... Uh, that's really the trade-off there. Two survivability plus the fortress ability is nice. You're going to be up there rolling dice. It is a heavy tank, so you get that re-roll for one of the dice in there too. Uh, seven, defense, or, uh, seven hit points means you can take a little bit of abuse before you go down. The real downside here is the three initiative. It's a killer. You're going to be moving early, so people are going to be able to move after you to counter after you. I think it represents how slow this tank is. But also on the downturn is you're also going to be firing last. So you have to survive getting all those other shots against you. You're going to be taking fire left and right by the time you get to go. You might not even be there anymore. So it's really a trade-off on this. It has the hit points and the survivability plus the fortress ability kind of balances out to give you a good defense, especially if you're in cover. Maybe you can put some upgrades on there to boost those up as well. But you really need some equipment on here to boost that initiative or I think it's going to fall short for you. you you're going to be, like I said, moving first, shooting last, and that's not what you want. You want to move later so you can set up your position better and you want to uh, fire sooner so you can take out those targets before they can return fire. So, stat-wise, it's a really nice tank, except for that initiative. And I'm really curious to see how that plays out in the game and how it balances up with some of the other tanks. But, as it stands, I see that being the big detriment to this, especially for the points cost you're paying for it. The trade-off is you have one of the biggest guns in the game currently. And uh, that thing's going to hit like a truck, especially with that big gun rule. And... Uh, the armor-piercing shells, if you can get up to somebody. The chance of getting in range to use those, though, unless somebody's damaged and immobile, is going to be pretty rough, being that almost everything, I think, in the game is going to be moving after you. So they can just easily move out of range, and you're not going to be able to use those shells. So, trade-off there, too. But overall, it looks like a good tank on stats. You've got the attack. You've got the survivability. Mobility's... Pretty much the same as all heavy tanks. Uh, it's up there. Uh, you're short of crewmen, so you got one guy doubling up crew. But uh, seven hit points is nothing to, to slouch at. It's just that initiative is going to kill you. If you can get some uh, 
upgrades on there to boost that initiative up, then it's definitely going to pay off for you in the end. Overall though, again, nice heavy. I think everybody got heavies in this wave. And uh, it's comparable to the others. Just that, that glaring weakness to com combat having that big gun. Those are your, your, your balance issue there, I think. So it's up to you if it's going to fit into your platoon or not. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for our look at the Wave 4 World of Tanks Miniatures IS-2 expansion. As always, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.